our country for national security reasons and for economic security reasons really needs a much larger workforce than we have right now in cybersecurity. We are changing the economic structure of the industry. We used to pay the people who couldn't do it a lot of money. They're firing the people who can't do the hands-on work and they're raising the salaries of the people who, who can do the hands-on work. We're facing a significant gulf right now that we cannot overcome without enough people with the skills, background, motivation, and dedication to really make the difference. Our focus has changed a lot that we are interested in a lot of young college uh, graduates because they have the skills, they are current, and uh, they seem to have a passion and, and an interest for this kind of work. And so the chance to talk to all of you, the chance to have you here, the chance to see this type of thing happen is very important to us. The guys at the top know what they want, can't find the people. I was at the, uh, the, the CCDC in California and Boeing was there and they hired all seven of the winning team. So that's the story. Welcome, welcome. I'm Casey O'Brien. I'm the CyberWatch Mid-Atlantic uh, Collegiate Cyber Defense Competition Coordinator. I'm going to just talk about what, what, what's going on. The D and the acronym CCDC. The word defense is really the operative word. You're inheriting systems such that they are and defending them. Hi, I'm Charlie Frick and this is Erica Spiker. We're here on the floor of the event. Each of the eight, eight collegiate teams for the CCDC are participating in what we call blue teams. So each of them are representative of the IT department for the Haven Electronics Corporation. While they're trying to maintain that network, we're also going to have the red team, professional hackers who are going to be attacking all of these kids at the same time. <laughs> this competition is a pretty complex evaluation. The teams will all start off at a clean slate. Points will be added to their overall score as penalties occur. Teams will be scored on service availability, data confidentiality, and system compromises. The team with the lowest amount of points at the end of a particular round will be in the lead. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Mid-Atlantic CCDC competition. We have upwards of 64 students. Here we go. Representing undergraduate and graduate students from two and four year schools. Here we go. So Haven Electric Co-op brought in consultants to help manage the HEC infrastructure. As the blue teams, you are those IT consultants. Go forth, defend, have fun. If I could imagine what the red team is doing right now, they're probably laughing a little bit because they've compromised so many systems. They've probably hidden a lot of their programs on there, and they're probably working on taking down some of the services. Wait, wait, we're only like five minutes in. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, a lot of the boxes came down very quickly. We were kind of thinking that they would attack very quickly, but I guess we didn't think they would attack that quickly. Well, it's, it's been a little stressful. We're changing the passwords quite often and kill a lot of connections. Services are going to go down, injects are going to have to get done, and hopefully we can file some incident reports, get some points back. For my job, I actually do uh, penetration testing work, not as much carnage as we see here, but actually to help people keep their network secure. Out of nowhere, we're just sitting here and it just went down. We could possibly have been penetrated. A key part of CCDC is the unexpected behavior you get from various types of attacks. Our attackers have got a little something special planned for our blue teams. We have web-enabled power strips, and if the defender teams fail to defend them or discover them, then Red Cell can find out the default password and actually kill power. We don't know if maybe someone tripped a wire, but we were all sitting down, we weren't touching anything, and it just stopped. So we really try to amp up the stress for a couple of reasons. One, this is really their first exposure. 
You know, they're, they're still in college, they're still learning. And so we're going to kind of goose up the pressure a little bit. Two, all of our sponsors are not only here to observe, but also they're here to recruit. And so by making things real, by making things difficult, we're giving the recruiters an opportunity to actually see people perform. Boeing is committed to growing the education and the next generation of cyber warriors for this country. Booz Allen uh, looks at cyber and cybersecurity as a major uh, line of business that, uh, you know, again, we are committed to on behalf of our clients, and we see that uh, growing uh, significantly in the future. What we're finding is that events like CCDC really bring out the top talent that's available. These are students willing to come out and spend a Saturday competing in these rounds. They're the ones who are most dedicated and committed to this type of a field. So we're finding those are the kinds of individuals that we want as employees. We are currently uh, a research contractor at the University of Maryland and we're doing advanced research in the area of uh, cyber analytics. So we're looking for folks who are at the top of their game to help us go and foster the development of these technologies. These kind of venues just offer us an opportunity to connect with the young people where we really believe there is a you know, tremendous upside for them in terms of taking their education and being able to get a very important entry-level job. Boeing has a history of education. This is part of our ongoing commitment. And this is a cyber competition about how can you learn and grow and be able to bring that talent. So by sponsoring events like CCDC, we want to make the students aware of the opportunities, not just with Northrop Grumman, but throughout the government, throughout the um, public sector. There's always a need for people who have an interest in this and a talent in it. You want to get that over three? No, okay. The team's retired. It's been a very, very long day for them, and tomorrow will be even longer. Hands up. I want to see everyone's hands in the air, please. Everybody up. Hands up. Hands up. It's 9 o'clock. I don't want to see anybody touching any hardware, no cable, no laptops, no keyboards. Thank you all very much for a wonderful first day. Once the blue cell rolls out, we give red cell usually about 15, 20 minutes of physical access. So basically he's putting on stuff on uh, for a back door, so tomorrow when we, these machines start up again and we can use them, we'll be able to get back in. These boxes are in play, right? They should notice absolutely nothing, but we'll have uh, access into full control into this particular laptop. They know that at you know eight o'clock, nine o'clock, the exercise is done. Am I going to work up until that time, or am I going to stop at 15 minutes prior, police up all of my passwords, lock my screen, make sure everything's secure, and be done with it? Good morning, everyone. Welcome to day two of the Mid-Atlantic CCDC competition. Looks like all of you made it back. Is anybody missing? Is anybody missing? Do we lose anyone? Did anyone break down and cry? Curl up in the fetal position and just want to go home? After one day of competition, in third place is Forsyth Technical Community College. In second place, James Madison University. And in first place is the University of Maryland College Park. This morning, several of the blue teams came in and found that their, their network didn't work quite right, or really at all. We come out of the gate this morning and noticed that there were some things that were awry. I need to status on where we are. They uh, took our uh, USB drive and did some business with that. The trick is to break the system just enough to get them to spin their wheels. On the network cables, they cut tape and hit it, so it actually looked like we had connectivity, but we didn't. 
We're um, trying to secure our systems and had a couple of hiccups this morning, but we're working on them and seem to be ironing them out. It's hard to really kind of feel the impact physically of an actual cyber attack. These students need to kind of learn how to function in a high stress environment because when they get out to the outside world, things don't work always as planned. The good news is, no matter how good or bad these guys and gals do today, nothing's really at stake. In terms of no one's going to lose a job, no one's going to go to jail, no one has to talk to a CEO and say, hey, I'm sorry, we've lost 6,000 credit cards. I'm the CEO of the power company, and I'm going to try to uh, push them a little bit to give me some facts, to tell me when things are going to be up, to make sure they understand that it's not just bits and bytes, but it's also my customers that are at risk here and my job as well. That dynamic is going to be scored. It's going to be scored just like another inject. And mm -hmm. we think that that kind of human scoring is equally important uh, to the technical scoring as well. I, I can feel the heat coming off <laughs> of the seat. Wow! Hi, hey, I'm Costas Turek as a CEO right of Heck. Can you give me a little bit of a rundown? We have had um, an intrusion to our networks. When we walked in this morning, I'm pretty sure there was a physical breach. They were successful in getting into the box. Oh, dear. Um, Spare me the details. So okay. what's happening? They then were able to get into um, several of our um, internal. Several? No. Yes. Oh, um, we are experiencing some difficulties experiencing? this Experiencing? Yes, sir. That's an active verb. If your system monitoring is down, how can you tell me that the systems are up? It's going on right now? Yes, sir. Actually, we were the problem. Our exchange server is having a little bit of issues. What? OK, let's relax. Sit okay. back. Well, we had a little problem with um, some of our, um, like the firewall. What I'm getting an impression is that we're not doing well. We didn't uh, change all our passwords okay. like we were supposed to. I, I think you told me too much. Give me good news, please. I've had nothing but bad news up to now. What are the good news? We are nearing a solution. Can my customers pay me this, this moment? At this Saturday. moment, yes. Ah, um, I like that part. The systems are up and running. Okay, so let All me relax. Why don't you give me a memo that defines for the major systems we have, who are the customers that are at risk, what you've done to remediate the problem that we had. So why don't you craft me a memo that I can bump to our human resources department, our okay. HR folks. You have six hours to do so. Go away, go work with your team, come back in six hours. All right, will do. Take care. Thank you. I'm coming to you guys now live from the floor. I've just been informed we've had a major event here at CCDC. As part of the exercise, our teams are allowed to send out incident reports, and those can be sent to law enforcement representatives. And one of our teams has found enough information for law enforcement to make an arrest. Law enforcement is closing in on the guilty party. I see. Uh, it looks like, oh, it looks, it looks like, like it is current. Georgia. It is Georgia. So she's finally been caught. There is, there, is there legal counsel for Georgia in attendance? Is anyone here a lawyer or stayed at a Holiday Inn Express last night? She's actually being escorted out of the red team area She is right actually now. being escorted out of the red team area. We have a physical crime we've seen committed. We got a hold of the evidence. We took a look at it. We saw breaking and entering and vandalism. Some of my team members, it was asked that I give them away in exchange for a shorter sentence. And she had been advised before that by her attorney uh, to not say anything, and then she stuck to that, so good for her. Everyone's tired, they're frustrated. This is where everything starts to separate. You start seeing the, the student teams getting better at their executing their game plan, getting better at hardening their systems, and generally being able to kind of hunk, hunk, hunker down and ride out the constant barrage of attacks against their system. We've actually seen first place decided in the last couple hours of the game. We've uh, definitely had some problems. We've been doing all right, but uh, it's been tough to keep up with Red Cell. They've really been coming at us recently, and it's uh, been tough. This is a really hostile situation, hostile network. Really, I'm just hoping that we can do better at responding to their attacks today than we did yesterday. Just try and uh, maintain a lead. Ladies and gentlemen, 
ladies and gentlemen. We are now ending the competition. It is 8 o'clock. The 2011 <laughs> Cyberwatch Mid Atlantic CCDC is officially over. Third place uh, was the team, uh, a team from North Carolina, Forsyth Technical Community College. Yeah. All right. Second place uh, goes to the team from James Madison University. Awesome. Great job. Without further ado, uh, the winners for the uh, 2011 Mid Atlantic uh, Regional. Uh, competition is University of Maryland College Park. If you're into information security, you guys are in the heart of it, in the nation, right here. People ask me, how'd you get where you got? I say, the Collegiate Cyber Defense Competition. This is all about why this kind of competition matters. Because it's you we need, not the people who can talk about security, not the people who can write about security. We need, we need a few of those. We need a lot of people who can do it. And that's why these competitions are so exciting, because they're, they're a chance to actually find the people who like that and want to do it.